and we uh, pulled out an edit of some of our former players that I've coached and been around. Um, I personally thought that he could play uh, either defensive line or O-line equally. He really wanted to play defensive line, so that's what we decided to do because I think three things, right? A player that believes he can play something, we should let him play. Then he'll usually play it better. And if a player can't play that, thirdly, they'll usually gravitate to where they can. Right? So he'll start off on defense, and hopefully he has a great career and never moves. But that's where we start. With uh, Daniel Brown, have you had a guy that's an edge rusher on the short side like him before? Is there a chance he could play some well on that? Yeah, you're probably going to go back home. I, said, I, had a, I played with a guy by the name of Leroy Smith at the University of Iowa that um, led the nation in socks. And he was a guy that uh, literally the same size as him went on to play in the NFL from New Jersey. Um, you know, I always think about this. I had a really good coach one time tell me, uh, you know, when they make a tackle uh, over the stadium, they usually announce his, his jersey number and his name. They never announce his height, right? And, and uh, this kid led the nation in sacks. And I think of the 18 sacks he hit, I doubt they ever yelled that he was six, six foot, not six two. How does Khalil compliment when you guys have built? Khalil Valentine? Yeah. I think Khalil, uh, Thad and I talked about this, right? Like when we were recruiting a running back in this class because we've got Caden, Josh, and, and Jordan. We thought we'd want to bring in someone in the, in the Aiden Lawfrey uh, uh, explosive. And then we really wanted someone um, that we felt could you know, do something maybe in the passing game. Um, Coach Lonnie, his, his uh, uh, offense has been able to do some things with a running back that uh, maybe some of our guys could do, but maybe this guy will be able to do it better. So uh, I think that was a high priority for us. There was another in-state prospect. We kind of went this direction. We just felt like there was something that we really uh, felt he brought to our program. The others couldn't. Which two all the guys down um, the question is, do I offer them the opportunity? Is it up yeah. to the kid? Yeah. Well, anybody that has the ability to do it, we, we, we definitely let them do it. But what we have to do is make sure that we can have the right amount of scholarships, right? So, so even like Keith Randolph, for instance, right? Keith is gone from our program, but he's still short of graduating uh, by a semester. So I can't use his scholarship necessarily to bring someone in, does that make sense? Sure. So you, you as a coach, right, and, and, and with our administration, just have to make sure you can't bring in, like our entire signing class, if all those guys came in, I wouldn't be able to have enough scholarships, right, until the scholarships from the guys that have already graduated, those have been, been, been processed. Quick transfer portal, I hope you found that market uh, in NIL prior right. I, I hope you see that evolving. The transfer portal, um, you know, literally when I first got here, coming out of COVID, right, and it was the first year of kind of doing it, everybody was feeling their way around. Um, what we've been able to do is we kind of have taken the guys, you know, for us, like for instance, Johnny Keith, uh, 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 Isaiah Williams, uh, Tip Ryman, all four of those guys had years of eligibility left who have decided to move on. Now, I kind of knew Johnny Keith probably were going to go that way, uh, but, you know, for sure, Tip and I, Isaiah, we knew there was going to be discussion after the season. So I have signed the high school kids to the number of kids that I knew were gonna leave. And then anybody that leaves unexpectedly, either NFL or, uh, you know, we had Sean Miller, Reggie Love, Sedaris McConnell, guys that we didn't tell to leave, but if they left, we didn't stop them, right? They, they, they have those choices that they need to make. Um, and then I use those scholarships as ways to recruit the portal and fill in a needs or depth uh, as needed. The, the, as far as the market, that's an interesting choice of words. Um, uh, I think it's a, a world uh, over the last three weeks, I've talked extensively uh, with a lot of coaches, right? So we have a, uh, a young man that's coming to us from uh, uh, an SEC school, a coach that ironically last year I was at odds with, right? And I called him and uh, had a conversation with him that was very enlightening about what's going on in their league, right? Um, I think the, the, our icon is set up in a way that is incredibly uh, 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 blessed to our players that are here. Um, in the right way, right? And I, I just don't know if everybody is using it the same way. Um, I get a kick out of, uh, you know, reading about how great a school is recruiting or doing things, but I really know what they're doing, right? And, and it's just, um, it's, a, it's a different time in today's world. We could probably have another press conference on that. Um, I wanted today's press conference to be about the 19 guys we got coming, because these guys truly define what I think it's all about, what we're trying to build our program. But I'm not oblivious to the fact that, you know, we'll probably add six, the seven portal guys like we did last year, probably even more specific uh, to certain positions that we need need help and we need a mature player. Um, we've got some really good news this morning. I think we're gonna get really good news this afternoon. Uh, last week got to, uh, we, it's really a unique time because last week it was time to see all the kids who were coming here in January, but then I was really portal portal recruiting and you could literally go, you know, there was one day where I was in 
a certain place in the south and I flew to Canada, right? Like it was just, it's a very unique time to, to see the kid and the parents at the same time. Because when you're dealing with transfer kids, they're at school, but their parents aren't with them. So there's, there's some huge, there was days where I think there was two or three days where I was in four states in one day, right? So the, the recruiting aspect of it is just so unique. Then you got to find out what their hours transfer. One of the things that's scary about the transfer portal, in my opinion, is we've done such a great job of college football of making the APR matter. And like, I know that at one point when I won three straight championships uh, in this league, um, our APR was, was in the, one of the highest in the country, the best that's ever been done. And I'm really worried that some of these guys now, uh, like Reggie, love him to death, right? Like, um, obviously he's going somewhere else in, in our conference. Um, I know he was thinking about going out west. I talked to that coach there, uh, but whatever transpired, now he's he's literally very close to graduate. I don't know if he'll graduate from here. And I, I just that's the only thing that gets scary for me is kids, uh, you know, are are moving to places that I I, I really hope that they get their degrees because in the end that's what it's all about. Brett, when you knew of, when you knew of an Alabama and a Michigan coming after Brandon Hansen having been committed for so long, how did you react to that? How did you as the staff deal it's with It's a great that? question, and I get the uh, uh, I get the question because. It's, it's big schools, right? And it's not big schools that worry as much as big money, right, sometimes. But with Brandon Hansen, um, he's going to be an Illinois player. He loves what we've done here. He's an Illinois kid through and through. Uh, it was important to come into the state school. He's uh, very ingrained in, in his education. Um, I think when we say we go after a certain type of kid, like uh, Coach Lunny and Coach Dish, right? Coach Dish just joined us this year. Uh, Coach Lunny's been with me for a long time before here. They went and met with a portal player, and the first thing Coach Lunny said to me, he goes, he said, Coach, he's your kind of guy, right? Like, and, and for us in our building, we know what that means. The outside world doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, but for us, um, you know, and, and then Brandon Hansen with the family that he's got and the mom and dad that raised him, he's just, I, I, he, I, I found it interesting because we found out other schools are pursuing him post back, right? He dealt with it and then said, hey, by the way, this school stopped in and tried to get me to come, and he was kind of like making, making light of it, right? So. Uh, I think he's a very special player in many ways. All right, thank you guys. Thank you.